not Athaliah, my dear. Your father doesn't mind if you marry Jehoram. I understood the arrangements for the wedding weren't made because father objected. No. Jehoshaphat himself objected. You believe in Baal. And Jehoshaphat has been trying to get rid of Baal worship in Judah. Now he's succeeded, and he's afraid you, as the wife of the crown prince, would again establish Baal worship. I might. You'd better, my daughter, or all the trouble I've gone to to train you has been for naught. Did father try to get Jehoshaphat to agree to the marriage? I... I don't know. But I'll talk to him again and see. <laughs> Ahab, dear, a union with Judah right now would be advantageous to us. Jehoshaphat will make a great king, powerful, influential, rich. And Jehoram is a fine young man, handsome and intelligent. Don't you think if you tried, you might get Jehoshaphat to agree to the marriage? Oh, if you say so, I'll see what I can do. An alliance was finally made between Israel and Judah. The marriage of Athaliah and Jehoram sealed the alliance. This is a good alliance, Ahab, for us. Why not use it first to regain the city of Ramoth Gilead from the Syrians? Invite Jehoshaphat to come here on a visit. We will wine and dine him until he can't refuse to help us regain Ramoth. <laughs> Of course I shall help you regain Ramoth, Ahab. By the terms of our alliance and the marriage of your daughter to my son, are not my people your people, my chariots your chariots, and my horses your horses? Oh, you're a real friend and compatriot, Jehoshaphat. I shall order my general to assemble the army at once. You will do the same. Uh, yes, Ahab, as soon as... Well, I am a firm believer, as you know, in following the will of God. You have here in Israel prophets of God. Why not seek their advice? If they approve of the undertaking, then I shall order my general to assemble my army. Well, it shall be done. Scribe, gather together the 400 prophets and have them appear before us today at the city gate. You are prophets of the God of Israel. We are, Your Majesty. His Majesty King of Judah and I myself desire to know God's will in the matter of regaining Ramoth. Shall we go to battle against Ramoth, or shall we not go? Go up, O King, for the Lord shall deliver it into thine hand. You are a prophet of the true God? We are prophets, Your Majesty. Uh, Ahab, is there not at least one more prophet of God that we might inquire of? Somehow these 400 don't well, seem quite... there is one man, but I... I doubt if we want to seek his advice. He... he doesn't respect me. He speaks nothing but evil against me, and I... Well, I don't like him. Let not the king of Israel be angry if I insist that we consult this man. Scribe, go and fetch Micaiah, son of Imla, immediately. <laughs> You are Micaiah, son of Imlah. I am. You are to go at once to the city gates where sit Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, and Ahab, king of Israel, mm. awaiting your advice concerning war against Syria. Four hundred prophets have already unanimously advised the king to go. May I um, suggest that you do likewise? Micaiah, shall we go against Ramoth to battle, or shall we forbear? I have not uh, 400 prophets already advised their majesties to go. How many times have I told you to tell me nothing but that which is true in the name of the Lord God of Israel? If thou go and fight for Ramoth, O king, the people of Israel shall be scattered upon the hills as sheep without a shepherd... And thou shalt surely be killed. You see, Jehoshaphat, I told you he would say nothing but evil. It is the words of those 400 prophets that speak evil of the king. I speak as inspired by the voice of God. Scribe, see that this prophet is put into prison and afflicted until I return from Ramoth in victory and peace. If thou return from Ramoth at all, O king, then hath the Lord not spoken through me. Hearken, ye king of Israel, and listen to the voice Take of... Take him away! No. 
Well, my friend Jehoshaphat, what say you? Go we against Ramoth, or go we not? I have already given my word. We shall go. Jehoshaphat, I'm going to remove these royal clothes and disguise myself as a common soldier, lest the Syrians recognize me and slay me. Then you... You do believe the prophecy of Micaiah? Believe him, I do not. I'm merely taking precautions. I shall be victorious and return to Samaria in triumph and peace. And a certain soldier of the Syrian army, thinking to see how true he was with a bow and arrow, drew his bow and shot at what he thought was an ordinary soldier riding an Israelite chariot. His aim was true. His arrow struck the man between the joints of his armor. Driver, I am sorely wounded. An arrow to turn off and get away from the battle. Uh, uh, armor bearer, mount the chariot and hold me up that the enemy know not that I am wounded. And King Ahab died about the going down of the sun, and they buried him in Samaria. General, have your men drive these scavenger dogs away from His Majesty's chariot, and have it washed clean of his blood. This fulfilled the words of the prophet who said, In the place where dogs lick the blood of Naboth, shall dogs lick thy blood. Many years later, as Jehu, new king of Israel, was arriving in the city of Samaria, he saw Jezebel look out an upper window. Jezebel, evil queen of Ahab. You are about to die. Servants of the queen mother, I command you, push her majesty out the window. Oh! Driver, get the chariot moving. Scribe, as I came into the city, the queen mother, Jezebel, was killed. Though evil and wicked, she was of royal blood. Give her a decent burial. You say there was nothing left of Queen Jezebel to bury except her skull, hands, and feet? A pack of scavenger dogs had already devoured her body, Your Majesty. Thus was fulfilled the word of God which had been spoken through his servant, Elijah. In the place where dogs lick the blood of Naboth, O King Ahab, so shall dogs lick thy blood from off thy chariot, and dogs shall eat Jezebel by the wall of Jezreel. Jezreel.